Joining me now is Robert Costa, national political reporter at the Washington Post, who wrote that piece, and Amanda Turkle, senior political reporter at the Huffington Post. Pleasure to have you both here. Robert, in this article, you cite Ted Cruz, one of the strong voices at that meeting, saying that uh, the Tea Party is still the party's most influential bloc, but that's not really how things are trending, is it? No, I think this is the central tension right in the GOP. There's the, the, the Ted Cruz wing that really believes that the shutdown of last year animated activists and is the reason there's any kind of energy right now on the right ahead of the midterm elections. On the other side, you have a much more cautious Republican leadership who believes the Senate majority is within reach. They want to play uh, a, a, a safer game ahead of November. And there was a messaging panel at this event. This is one of my favorite highlights of it from Jim DeMint, kind of trying to figure out how you can get some of these extreme positions to resonate with the general electorate. Is that possible, do you think? Uh, it was very. It was fascinating for me to be at the Ritz Carlton Hotel in Tyson's Corner, Virginia, and they had this messaging panel, Ronan. There was a lot of frustration, a lot of exasperation that the conservative values that this group represents and, and tries to promote are not resonating with the voters they're trying to connect with. They're not resonating with minority mm -hmm. audiences, not resonating with young people, and they're grappling with how to move forward, not only within divided government, but within this changing country with different demographics. Amanda, this is a big money season. Let's talk about some of the money. One of the things that interested me coming out is the fact that so little of the Republican Party right now, money right now is going to specific Tea Party candidates. Actually, you see the stat there, out of 37.5 million raised this year by the six major Tea Party super PACs, less than 7 million has been devoted to helping specific candidates. That's according to the Sunlight Foundation. Uh, do you think that shows a lack of faith in that wing of the party's own candidates? Well, the Tea Party groups have actually gotten some criticism for that. Why aren't you spending more to right. help our candidates when, you know, you guys seem to be enriching yourselves, uh, giving yourselves big salaries? I mean, I think that the, the Tea Party has gotten a little bit smarter than they were, say, in 2010, when they did have a lot of wins, but they also backed some candidates who really hurt the Republican Party right. uh, in picking up more seats. So I think the Republican Party, as the Tea Party has gotten a little bit smarter, but so has the establishment. They know the Tea Party is coming in these primaries to challenge them, and they are getting a money. They're attacking early, which Mitch McConnell has done against mm -hmm. uh, Matt Bevin in Kentucky. L and let's talk just about that a lot race. Smarter. I think that's a great example. I mean, when he entered that race, Bevin was really chipping away at McConnell's lead. Now, in the latest numbers, according to our NBC News poll, he's 30 points behind. Do you think the money would have helped? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's, let's go to you on, the, on that one, Amanda. Sure, I think the money definitely would have helped him. I mean, yeah. Mitch McConnell had a very sophisticated operation. He, not a lot of people knew Matt Bevin, so his campaign went in early, defined him, a lot of negative campaigning, and he has been able to raise a lot more money. I mean, it was always going to be an uphill battle, which even mm -hmm. the Tea Party groups acknowledge. But sure, more money, he might have been able to define himself and hit back at some of these attacks that McConnell was throwing his way. Right, and Robert, it sounds like you've got thoughts on that Kentucky race. If McConnell and his Democratic opponent, Allison Grimes, do become the candidates, uh, do you think that's a winnable seat for Dems? According to our latest numbers, it seems like it might be. They're showing McConnell up only one point. I think it's uh, it's within play for Democrats, yeah. and the reason is McConnell has, has been in office since 1984, and he has hard negative numbers within the state, numbers that are not going to move much between now and the election. So he's battling against that. She's mm -hmm. a youthful candidate. She's won statewide. She's charismatic. McConnell believes he has the machine on the ground in Kentucky to right. succeed. He's got Rand Paul's uh, chief political strategist as his campaign manager to make sure those libertarians turn up. Uh, but at the same time, if Democrats are going to target this all for the rest of the year they want this seat yeah yeah well it seems like there's some potential there we'll see amanda arch conservative rick santorum of course is getting into some of these races he threw his back into jason conger in oregon uh to karen handel in georgia uh, do you think he can make a dent in either of those races well, I think that this is a sort of the social conservatives trying to have mm -hmm. a voice. You have the establishment, you have these Tea Party groups, and the social conservatives. There is a much more libertarian strain now to the conservative movement than there was maybe a few years ago. Uh, more people, for example, are in the Republican Party are supporting same-sex marriage, uh, criminal justice reform. And so people like Rick Santorum are really struggling to find people and to continue to have a voice and to beat back on some of that. Before you both go, one of my favorite beats in the race right now, there's a fight going on in Idaho for the top job there. Incumbent Butch Otter is a little worried about his governorship. Uh, exhibit A in the governor debate where Otter reportedly insisted that perennial candidates, biker Harley Brown and the spectacularly bearded Walt Bays joined in, uh, resulting in something of a circus. It's gone pretty viral. Take a look. You have your choice, folks. A cowboy 
a curmudgeon, a piker, or a normal guy? Take your pick. I don't know, guys. I kind of want all of them to win. What do you think? <laughs> well, I, I actually spoke to Governor Otter a couple weeks ago, and we talked about uh, how Mitt Romney was coming into his state, and he's close with Romney personally. And I think in Idaho, Bruce Otter, the Mitt Romney model of politics, that's going to play as, mu as much fun of these, as these guys are. I don't think they have much of a chance. Amanda, are you team biker? <laughs> team biker but i have to give the governor a lot of credit he said that all the candidates should be in and it made made for a great show all right well the races as a whole are great shows we'll bring you both back to talk about it thank you so much thanks, thanks Rona. and